I have no idea what that weapon is. I've never seen one of those in my life. He used the, the butt of his weapon to knock something out. That was pretty cool. It's possible. I can see you utilizing that. Now, bullet's gonna go right through that mattress, so it's pretty cool that he took a knee to reload, but if somebody's coming at you and they shoot at you, that mattress isn't stopping anything. Hey everybody, we're gonna watch Rainbow Six clip and this one is about the siege. It should be pretty interesting. I'll give you my FBI perspective on how I see this siege going. Let's watch. It's pretty close range to be using a, a viewfinder, but I think it's still realistic. From that distance, you can probably make that shot without sight, or at least without a, a viewfinder. I have no idea what that weapon is. I've never seen one of those in my life. I see the FBI on the hat, but usually it would be on the vest. Looks like she's got some extra magazines on, on the front. That's pretty cool. That's where she'd pull them from. Got her gloves on, little high-tech tactical gloves. That's pretty cool. I don't know about the ponytail, man. Ponytails are liabilities. If somebody grabs that ponytail or that thing gets caught in something, she's running through a door and the door closes. That's a bad day. They don't necessarily have shorter hair, but they'd probably put it up in a bun or something. The sunglasses are common, not indoors. You know, they're still wearing them indoors and that kind of thing so that part's not common the sunglasses are common but i'll tell you one of the biggest things to me is is relating to people so when you have to relate to people if you walk up to a person on the street with sunglasses on looking like this my impression is they're gonna think oh this person think he's a badass you know they can't relate to me so i'd probably take the glasses off so they could see my eyes show a smile because this is what they're looking for they're looking for an fbi agent who thinks he know he or she knows everything who's tough who's probably hard as nails but that's not what you need all the time. Sometimes you need um, somebody you can talk to because we really need that information from people. Like really a large percentage of what the FBI does is because of the public helping. So if you have a persona that you are that you can't be approached, then people are going to be less, probably less likely to talk to you. Yeah, she got some pretty high tech stuff there. All right, all right ready? I've never seen one of those before. She's not asking any questions. She's just, she's just putting the lead down range. She's not asking any questions. She's a one-man team, so she's pretty awesome. The FBI recently changed from a 40 caliber Glock to a 9 millimeter Glock. And the reason they did that was it was proven that that 9 millimeter ammo was just as effective as 40 caliber ammunition. So it's just as effective with a little less recoil, so it's a little easier for people to control. Probably was more cost effective as well, so they switched to 9 millimeter. Glock weapons are pretty reliable. And some of the firearms instructors at Quantico, like they, they do experiments on their own. They may shoot like a thousand rounds through one without even cleaning it and it never jams once. So they, they really like the clock. When you mix fuel, metal oxide, and metal powder in just the right way. That sounds like the guy's voice from Narcos. When it comes to making entries from a SWAT team perspective, ordinarily you're either using a, a barrier to knock the door in, and usually you'll throw in like a, maybe a flash bang grenade just to create some diversion. Maybe a, a, a flash kind of disorient, and then you go in dynamically. So the, the greater percent of FBI entries into houses are a knock on the door. Now, a knock on the door and the bad guy or the person inside answering and then you pulling them outside, telling them on they're under arrest and going into the house. That's how the majority of them happen. Got the shotgun bullets. Okay, I'm gonna pause Castle. Let me look at Castle here. Uh oh. Got some shotgun shells. Maybe some kind of protective vest on just a little bit. I'm not sure what that is in those front pockets. It's got his tactical gloves on, got some tactical elbow pads on, got his goggles, helmet. He's ready to do business. That's not bad. So usually you have an earpiece and you're doing more listening than talking. Like your objective is clear for the most part. Let's say you're gonna do a dynamic entry. You've already been briefed, you and your team, you know what you're going in to do so maybe you're listening to the command center that's just telling you okay you guys are good to go something of that nature but as far as talking to each other you, you don't necessarily need those because the, the team that you're with you're staying together for the most part and so my voice is probably loud enough for you to hear so you're not doing a lot of talking you're doing more listening in this case it looks like on the front that could be a button I think that's his button where he presses it to transpire his transponder or whatever it's not bad that's pretty good I like the goggles 
we just had basic goggles. Some guys may upgrade and get some that maybe have some type of ballistic resistance component to them. But for the most part, we just had just plain regular goggles or something like his. Looks like it gives protection all the way around, which is great. Because if you're throwing flashbangs or there's debris flying, the last thing you want is to have something in your eye and now you're down, especially if you wear contacts. So some guys may get prescription goggles. They don't want to wear contacts. You'll see that from time to time. And the FBI have bomb techs, and those those guys and gals get special training and specific training to dealing with bombs or, or explosive devices. Yeah, I don't have any experience with that, and, and I, I did not want any experience with that. I want to be running away from the bomb. I want to be that guy. He used the, the butt of his weapon to knock something out. That was pretty cool. It's possible. I can see you utilizing that, whether it's to, to strike at someone or to scrape someone or knock something, a, a, a window out. If it was a glass, I'd probably use the barrel end of it, break the glass, but the butt end, yeah. So some of the standard things are how you're entering a room. The first person in that enters is going to go ordinarily. Everybody's different, I guess, in, in some case, department or whatever, but usually you're going in and you're going left. The next person in is going right and the next person is going to the center and then out of the doorway. The doorway is called a fatal funnel. If a bad guy's in the room and you come in through the doorway, even if that room is dark, that door being open just allowed light into the room. So they're probably gonna concentrate their rounds at that door. When you knock on a door, you move to the side because if they're gonna shoot, they're probably gonna shoot at the door, assuming that you're standing in front of it. So we call that the fatal funnel. A doorway is a fatal funnel. So the first guy in, is gonna go in, and then to the left, second guy in, to the right, third guy in the middle. And you're doing it quick enough to where, even if the guy that comes in first and goes left, if there's a bad guy that's tracking him, the second or the third guy should pick him up if the first guy didn't already pick him up. Again, we're using voices to kind of clear the room, clear left, clear right, center clear, room clear, and then maybe we leave that room, maybe we leave one person in the room to keep it secure and then we move on. But usually your commands are pretty simple. You know, center clear, left clear, right clear, room clear, breaching the door, so. Very few hand signals. Now I'm sure there are some units that may use a lot of hand signals and that's completely fine. It's just that we didn't use a lot of them. Now a bullet's gonna go right through that mattress, so it's pretty cool that he took a knee to reload, but if somebody's coming at you and they shoot at you, that mattress isn't stopping anything. It's got thermal imaging. It's got some high tech stuff. And like now he's looking through that. So what if a bad guy, a target approaches now? You're gonna have to drop that and get your gun back up. Well, the time it takes to do that, you probably ate some lead during that transition period. So if somebody's reading a screen or a tablet, they probably need to be way in the back or in a command center and they're feeding information to these folks who are still up on their weapon looking at the target. Nice tech though. If it exists, it's pretty cool. You know, if you're in a cold environment, let's say agents in Alaska, are probably the tactics there, the cold weather, sub-zero temperature may warrant a particular type of glove, something that goes along with that territory. But in my experience, Miami, Florida, Newark, New Jersey, Quantico, nothing special. Some, some guys wear gloves, but I don't like to wear gloves because it can mess with your trigger press or the pressure or the amount of force that you apply to it as you're pressing the trigger. So as a rule, we typically try not to have anything covering your trigger finger, at least. You don't want to lose that sensitivity. Yeah, stairwells are always tricky kind of things too. Like somebody could be up under a stairwell. So when you're coming down a stairwell or going up a stairwell, it's it's kind of a choreographed move because the last thing you want is to have somebody pop out and take a shot at you from under the stairwell or from over the top of that railing. So usually you're doing that back to back. One person is going up and the other person is at your back covering up over that ledge as you as you breach the top of it. So kind of a choreographed move. So when it comes to weapons proficiency, it's a diminishing skill. If you don't shoot, you'll lose it at some point. So as an instructor, I usually, so it's a collateral duty. So as an agent, your primary job is investigating cases. But as an instructor, you go to the range and teach from time to time. Maybe it's once, once a month, but I also try 
had to go and just shoot and do different things because that's how you kept your proficiency up. An average month, I may shoot 100, 150 rounds, and that would be going to the range and maybe on Fridays, every other Friday, go to the range, shoot off a box of about 50, some close target, some with the target far off, some drawing and canting the weapon and shooting from the hip, just different things because any situation you think you may encounter, you want to prepare for that. And when it comes to image for the FBI, of course, the greater FBI image is everything, which is why when you have agents or employees that do things, they're disciplined. And if whatever they did made it into the public eye, so maybe even disciplined even more. I think not too long ago, there was an unfortunate incident where the kid was in a nightclub and did a backflip and his gun fell out and he picked it up off the ground. I mean, I don't think he's with the FBI anymore. Now, I don't know if it, if he was fired or if he resigned, but my point is it was in the public persona. The public saw it and so people make assumptions and that kind of thing. So the FBI is big on image. Okay, so hey, we just watched Rainbow Six. The FBI agents on that one were pretty cool. Their gear was pretty cool. Some pretty interesting things there. They did some pretty interesting things. I, I, re I really do like the gear. Like the goggles, like the helmet. Nice. YouTube, I'm good. See, you can tell how old I am because these, it should just come naturally, I'm sure. So, Hey everybody, thanks for watching my reacts to Rainbow Six. If you like videos like this, check out Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. Be safe out there.